Hiya, babe. Say, how about... Oh, does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you will hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Maisie, like the man said, Maisie Revere of Brooklyn. They say all roads lead to Brooklyn, and I believe it, because I've personally walked over all of them. I'm in show business, and it seems I'm either walking to a job that's ready to fold or walking back from one that just has. In this case, I've just been with a stock company playing in a play called The Cherry Orchard. I hope the audience has understood it. I didn't. And when they cut the orchard down in the last act, I wanted to go out and help chop. Well, this morning I was walking along the road in the rolling hill country, and the scenery and the clouds are so beautiful I could hardly feel the shellac in my feet were taken. Then I heard a car pull up behind me and stop. Good morning, young lady. Oh. Oh, don't be scared and dive into those bushes. Oh, <laughs> hello. You know, pardon my presumptuousness, but... Uh... May I offer you a ride in this ancient but honorable old chariot? Well, I don't know. Well, I... I always stop and ask every beautiful young girl if she wouldn't care to ride to the next town with the country's most notorious rake, woman chaser, and libertine of 50 years ago. Well, I must admit that's a very frank approach. Oh, yes. I've always found that honesty was the best policy. Occasionally. <laughs> But if you don't feel safe sitting up here with such an unsanctified character, you can ride in the trailer behind. Oh, no, I'm not that worried. But let me read the sign in the trailer. Oh. Old Doc Quackenbush, sole inventor, manufacturer, and distributor of Quackenbush's Universal Elixir. Uh-huh. Oh, well, then you're a doctor. In some states, yes. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am L. Ron Quackenbush, M.D. Uh, well, I suppose the M.D. stands for Miracle Doctor. No, it stands for Medical Delinquent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, my name is Maisie Revere. I'm glad to know you, Doc. Well, the pleasure's mine, Maisie. Well, here we go. Well, so you're the inventor of Quackenbush's Universal Elixir. What do you mean by universal? Well, I call it that because everything in the universe is in it. <laughs> it also happens to be good for almost anything you can think of. It cures everything from alcoholism to sobriety. Now, that reminds me, it's time to take my regular morning antitoxin now. <laughs> you take the wheel for a moment, my dear, huh? Okay. Yeah, I got it right here next to my heart. Yeah. What are you curing right now? Alcoholism or sobriety? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's so Wonderful stuff. <laughs> One of my best batches yet. <laughs> well, Maisie, I've forgotten just what it is I'm trying to cure myself of, but I think it's old age. <laughs> yeah. Well, that took 20 years off my age. Well, let me know when you get back to 25, and I'll go back and ride in the trailer. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> How do you sell the stuff, anyway? Well, please, do not refer to the elixir as stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, swill, yes, but stuff, no. Well, I tell you, just park my trailer in a likely spot. I open up the collapsible stage, do a few magic tricks to collect the crowd, and then I give them the pitch. Well, dear, it doesn't sound very sure fire, Doc. How you doing? Well, to be frank, only fair, yeah. I got to admit that I'm always relieved when I go over a county line. You know what you need, Doc? Another shot of the elixir? No, you need a shill. Now, here's the way I see it. You do the tricks and start the pitch. 
Right in the middle of it, I bust in. I'm in agony. I'm suffering from acute coreopsis of the lobelia. Yeah, just a moment, my pretty wench. There might be a few flower lovers in the crowd who'd recognize that disease. Well, all right, it can be something else. But anyway, that'll attract a little attention, especially if I wear a bright red sweater. Now we're making progress. I'm ready to kick the bucket any minute. I'm in terrible shape. My dear young lady, your shape will never be terrible. Oh, don't interrupt. The tank's just the same. Yeah, famous for my veracity. I come up on the stage. I tell you that I've tried everything. I've been given up by the Mayo brothers, the Menninger brothers, and the Ringling brothers. I'm at death's door. And I pull you through. Uh, well, don't you think we can use a little fresher material than that? Yeah, and I got carried away. Yeah. I come to you as a last resort. I'm desperate. You get out the bottle of Quackenbush's elixir of panther oil and hand it to me. Oh, this is great, Maisie. I drink it. Slowly a sensational change comes over me. I get better right in front of their eyes. I'm cured. I feel wonderful. I buy ten bottles and jump off the stage and exit through the crowd. Followed by the entire high school basketball team. Yeah. Well... What do you think of it? Oh, it sounds absolutely perfect, but um, are you a good enough actress to handle the part? Doc, I've been everything from Little Eva to the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I'll admit they weren't Broadway productions. They've been Fifth Road Companies and Major Bowes units, but I've had plenty of experience. Well, Maisie, I'll make you a full partner. Shake, partner. Ah. Uh, and I think we ought to have a quick snort of elixir to seal the bargain, huh? Eh? Here, you might as well know now what it tastes like. Okay. <coughs> you like it? Dr. Quackenbush, this is an intestinal hot foot. You ought to serve a blowtorch for a chaser. <laughs> Here's your soda, good looking. Well, thanks, handsome. Maisie. Maisie Revere. Gee, somebody knows me in this town. I hope it isn't the sheriff. Oh, Maisie. Gee, it's wonderful to see you. Well, uh, um, uh, hello. Remember me, Steve Carmichael? Um. Well, in those days, it was Captain Steve Carmichael. Oh, oh, sure. You were a doctor in the Air Force in England, and I was with the USO unit. That's right. Oh, uh, you were going on a combat mission the next day. Uh, yes. Or at least that's what you told me. Seems to me every guy I met was going on a suicide mission the next day. Well, Maisie, I was so crazy about you that I would have told you anything for that date. Do you remember it? I remember exactly how you looked. Uh-uh, be careful. It was pretty hard to tell how anybody looked in the blackout. Oh, I didn't have to see you. Every time a buzz bomb went off, you grabbed hold of me. Of course, um... I grabbed hold of you because I was a little scared, too. Yeah. As I remember, sometimes you didn't even wait for an explosion. <laughs> oh, Maisie, it was a wonderful night. I've never been so scared and so happy at the same time in my life. Ah. Well, <laughs> I guess this is the little town you told me about, hmm? Mm-hmm. The village square with the bandstand, the lazy river that winds through the town, and the city jail with your initials on the wall of cell number five. <laughs> I guess I did spend the evening talking about me, didn't I? Well, I had to keep you talking. I was afraid to let you change the subject. <laughs> well, did you hang out your shingle here? Yes, Maisie. And I've got a wonderful practice. You know, there have been four generations of Dr. Carmichael's in this town. Oh, well, I suppose you've already started arranging for a fifth. How, how many children do you have? Oh, now, Maisie, you didn't think I could ever marry anybody but you, did you? Ah, oh, come on now, Steve. You haven't been waiting for me all this time. You're smarter than that, I hope. I'm afraid not. Uh, Maisie, why didn't you answer the letters I wrote you? Oh, well, you know how it was over there. Guys were falling for girls they'd never think of twice about at home. Well, they they were awful sweet letters, just the same. <laughs> well, anyway, you're here now. What are you doing in town? In town? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, um, I, I'm just... Passing through, I, I have sort of an acting job waiting for me. Well, Maisie, I'm going to do my darndest to keep you here. And I'm going to start out right now by having you to dinner with my folks tonight. Oh, well, no, no, please, Steve. I'm not the girl you want. I've got the wanderlust. It's in my blood just like show business. Well, I think I can give you something to remedy that. Wait here while I phone my mother and tell her the wonderful news. She's heard all about you. I'll only oh. be a second. Oh, gee. 
Say, handsome. Oh, anything you say, good looking. When Dr. Carmichael comes back, tell him I had to run and not to wait for me. Uh, I'll wait for you. Just give him the message. Haven't you got a message for me, too? Yeah. You make a very fine soda, jerk. And so, my friend, I gave that poor suffering man a bottle of Quackenbush's Universal Elixir. He drank it. And in front of my very eyes, yours. Another case. A man with an auto mechanic. He came to me and said, Doc, he said, Doc, Doc, I'm ready for the junkie. I got a loose cylinder head, a leak in the fuel pump, my valves need grinding, my crankcase ought to be drained, and I've blown a gasket. I'm tired. I got no pep. My wife is singing a leave in me. Yes, my friend, he was a very sad picture of a man uh, standing there with a tear rolling down his cheek. Well, folks, I sold that man a dozen bottles of Quackenbush's Universal Elixir, and after two bottles, uh, he was cured. Not only did he have his old pep and energy back, but by the time he finished the complete treatment, it was bigamy. Oh, That's right, men. Step right up. Now, don't crowd. It's only $2 a bottle. It won't grow hair on your chest. But it'll make you feel like you don't need any. <laughs> I'll take one. I'm sorry, Sonny. You're too young. Yeah, how about me, Oh, Sonny? thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. How many bottles, sir? Thank, thank you. you. Hey, good luck, Grandfather. Uh, uh, now uh, I'm going to show you folks a little trick, a little trick, folks. I have here a piece of string with two ends, one on each. And now then, I'm going to tie a knot. Let me through, it. quick. What, Let what, me what, through. What? What seems to be the difficulty here? You are interrupting my trick, young lady. Are you Dr. L. Ron Quackenbush, the fabulous Dr. Quackenbush? Well, I'm famous in a modest way. Oh, Doctor, I've searched all over for you because I... Because I... Oh! What is the matter, my child? Here, step right up here on the platform. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Oh, oh, you're my only hope. There we are. Now turn around and tell us what your trouble is. All right. Wow! Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, my patient appreciates your good wishes, but this is an emergency. Hey, shall I boil some water? Yes, and then jump into it. <laughs> what? What I say is your ailment, my child. Dr. Quackenbush, I've been given up by all the greatest specialists in in Chicago and New York. I've been to Dr. Gubrador, Dr. Princeton, Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare. Don't overdo it, me. And, of course, the famous Dr. Cronkite. No. Oh, can you do anything for me, Doctor? Can anybody do anything for me? I can. I know exactly what's wrong with it. Dr. Wait a minute. Am I to understand that you know the complicated nature of this unfortunate young woman's ailment? You bet I do. Oh, Steve. She's suffering from an acute attack of Flab Meyer's disease. Well, entirely wrong. And she'd have to be in the hospital under my personal care for the next six months. Now, you be but I'll cure her if it takes the rest of my life. Oh, I'll be no. Why not? No. Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Dr. Robinson is wanted in surgery. Dr. Robinson is wanted in surgery. Wonder what old Butterfingers has done this time. Last month he sewed up a tennis racket inside. Oh my gosh, is this thing still on? Holy! And uh, how are you feeling today, Maisie? 
Oh, Steve, you louse. <laughs> oh, no kidding, gorgeous. How are you? If you want to find out how I am, look at the chart at the foot of the bed. Uh, oh, yes, of course. I'll look. Some doctor, I'll say. I'm feeling the same as I was yesterday and the day before and the day before that. I'm fine. Yes, but according to your chart, you're not quite as mad as you were. I see here that your temperature has dropped down to 115. Well, you'd be mad, too, if somebody kidnapped you off a stage and put you into a hospital. That was the best acting job I've had in a long time. Acting? You were just a live commercial for a bottle of souped-up soda pop. No. Oh, but, Maisie, of course you were. You did look pale and beautiful, dying with the ravages of Flatmire's disease. Steve... Make him give me back my clothes, huh? Uh Uh-uh. When are you going to say you'll marry me, Maisie? Oh, Steve. You're a wonderful guy, and I do like you a lot. Maybe even a little more, but... Gee, I don't know. I I wouldn't make a good doctor's wife. Calling Dr. Carmichael. Dr. Carmichael, report to the clinic, please. Well, Maisie, I've got to go. They're calling me. I'll be back later. Come in. Oh... How are you? I thought you'd moved on. What, to leave you in the sink of iniquity? Never. Oh, um, Dr. Quackenbush, may I present Dr. Carmichael? Oh, how do you do? It's a pleasure to meet you, Doctor. I was just leaving. I, um, hope you won't mind. On the contrary, you've doubled my pleasure. Um, what you got there for me, Doc? Oh, just some flowers, Maisie. Little token of my undying esteem. Oh, they're lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Well... I'll be frank and say I didn't buy them, but there was a wedding going on as I walked down the street. I joined the guests momentarily and picked up these flowers. Great Scott, I hope it was a wedding. I don't know. These are lilies. Oh, well, the flowers are pretty. Here, let's throw these crummy yellow roses out. No, there. don't. Don't. They're from Steve. Oh, the doc who broke our act up? Mm-hmm. What's he doing? Breathing hot on your neck? Uh-huh. Look how my back hairs are all frizzed up. Well, do you like this character? Well, sort of. He's an awful nice guy, Doc. And he's pretty crazy about me. He comes from an old family around here, and I've met his folks there swell. No, they're softening you up, getting you ready for the kill. They're giving you that little white cottage with the hollyhocks in the back routine. Well, sometimes I wonder if it isn't better than beating my feet off to the ankles, tramping around the world. I never had a home or a family of my own. Well, who does? Maisie, this is the most dangerous spot you've ever been in. You're beginning to believe all this stuff you never fell for before. No more visitors for a while now, Mr. Zippel. Yeah, I'll only be a few minutes longer. Out, 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 out. Now, see here, you wretched Florence Nightingale. I am here in a professional capacity as Miss Revere's medical advisor. And I thank you to give me the proper courtesy I'm entitled to. Oh, uh, well, let me introduce you to Dr. Quackenbush, uh, this is Miss Coogan. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were a doctor. Oh, sure. Don't be fooled by that checkerboard sport coat, the horseshoe tie pin, and the deck of cards in his vest. He's a doctor, all right. One of the best. Well, where's his little black bag? I didn't bring it. I left it in my office, along with my stethoscope, my fluoroscope, and my voodoo drums. Voodoo drums? Dr. Quackenbush is also a witch doctor. Anybody you'd like to see drop dead? Well... And if you doubt me, I'll tell you a little about yourself. You're unmarried, unhappily unmarried. But you are intelligent, a good cook. You like candy, cats, and poultry. How did you know, Doctor? Because I'm a diagnostic wizard, my child. Maisie, stop yawning. I'm sleepy. All right. Miss Coogan and I will both go. But here's some decent reading material for you when you wake up. Oh, thanks, Doc. Just what I wanted. Variety, billboard, and the hobo news. Oh, I think I'll go to sleep. (laughs) Dr. Carmichael's resident. Oh, hello, Mrs. Delphi, and this is Mrs. Carmichael speaking. Made day out, you know. <laughs> Dinner at the country club? Oh, Stephen and I would be delighted. So nice of you to think of it. Yes? Oh, yes, thank you. Bye. I'm home from school, Mom. Send the door, dear. Okay. What you do in school today? You wrote themes on the subject of what's wonderful about my mother. Oh, well, I hope you could think of something. I said you were the only woman I counted had been shot out of a cannon. Oh, yeah. 
In those days, I was a perfect 16-gauge. I also said you used to do the hula on a sideshow. Stevie. Well, I was just kidding. And besides, this is only a dream. Oh, yes, I forgot. Of course, it's true. It's true. Oh, hello, darling. Hi, you gorgeous. Hello, Stevie. Hi, Pop. Well, here comes the mushy stuff. Oh, I'm crazy about you, Maisie. And you're looking more beautiful than ever. Gee, you tell me that every day, and do I love it. <laughs> Any calls for me? Yes. Helen Thorson, she's a pretty girl. Lydia Brown and Roberta Cassidy and Mrs. Wilkerson. Oh, I wonder what they want. You, I suppose. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wish you could confine your practice entirely to old men. Oh, now, Maisie, you don't worry about me, do you? Maisie? 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 Wake up, Maisie. Maisie. Hmm? Oh, oh. <laughs> where am I? Well, what happened? Oh, you've really been dreaming, gorgeous. Ah, oh, it's you, Steve. Uh, Maisie, look, I, I, I've got to run out on an all-night emergency call, but I, uh, I just have to ask you again. Will you marry me? Marry you? Mm-hmm. Well, yes, of course, Steve. Oh, Maisie, that's wonderful, wonderful. I, I'll see you later, honey. Oh, my gosh. What in the world did I say? <laughs> Come in. It's me, Doc Quackenbush, Maisie. Oh, I was asleep. Listen, dear child, I don't like your being in this place. It's a bad environment. All the doctors here are college men. You got to get out tonight, oh, now. But, but I think I'm going to marry him. What? Marry a doctor? Oh, they make very poor husbands. They're out on call all the time, and every woman in town falls for a good-looking doctor. I know, but you have a home and children. But he's not in the business, Maisie. No. You'll have to explain what all the headlines and variety mean. And you'll be lucky if you ever tell your new joke you haven't already heard. You might as well quit kidding yourself, Maisie. He ought to marry a local girl, a nurse, or a daughter of another doctor. Yeah, I suppose uh, you're right. Now, here, here, here's your suitcase with all your clothes. Now, hurry up and get dressed. How'd you get my clothes? I've been treating Miss Coogan with Quackenbush's universal elixir. The results would amaze you. I'll be dressed in five minutes. <laughs> Are you sure we can get past Miss Coogan, Doc? It's a cinch. Watch. Hello, Mr. Revere. I see you're planning on... Uh, uh, planning on leaving us. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Quackenbush recommended it. Yeah, that I have. Dr. Quackenbush? Oh. Well, not really, Mr. Revere. I don't think... That, don't think that he is... He is a doctor. Yeah. Are you hiccuping, Mr. Revere? No, you are. <laughs> Oh, well, that's not the funniest thing. Well, as I was saying, I tried some of Dr. Quacker and Quack's universal Alexa, and it's nothing but a little flavored water. Are you sure I have I have hiccups? Uh, well, I think it's Dr. Quackenbush. Would you give this note to Dr. Carmichael when he comes in, Miss Coogan? I'd be delighted. Uh, uh, let yeah. me ask you something, Miss Coogan. Are you happy now? I'm the happiest girl in the world. And when Dr. Carmichael comes in, I'm going to give him a great big kiss. She's cured. There's the sun coming up, Doc. Yeah, Maisie, it's the dawn of another day. Yeah. The world lies before us, full of adventure, excitement, and suckers to sell the elixir to. I think I'll stop the car a moment so we can get the full treatment, eh? Ah. Oh, it sure is beautiful. Yeah. Tell me honestly, Maisie, are you glad I got you away from that guy? What guy? Oh, you mean Steve? <laughs> Never mind. You just answered my question. <laughs> well, he was a swell guy, Doc. But show business is my business, and I guess it always will be. 
I hate to admit it, but I'm looking forward to putting on the symptoms of Flabmire's disease at the next town. <laughs> You're a real trooper, Maisie. Yeah, this is the life for me. That's good, daughter. Yeah, I owe you a lot, Doc. Why, if it hadn't been for you, I might have been happily married the rest of my life. <laughs> Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, that was the closest I've ever come to getting married willingly. I've been closer unwillingly, but that's another story. In that case, the guy had a gun and... Well, I'll tell you some other time. As for Steve, I got a letter from him in care of Billboard a couple of weeks later. It seems that Miss Coogan gave him that big kiss when he came back, and it developed into a beautiful romance. The elixir did something for her, and Steve wanted a case of it to keep her in trim. <laughs> he also wanted to analyze it and see what was in it. So if you hear of somebody discovering a new vitamin or miracle drug in the next few weeks, you know that it's nothing but concentrated quack and bushes universal elixir. <laughs> well, see, you got a new job dancing in a nightclub, so let's get there and get going. <laughs> You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie was written by John L. Green. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Hans Conried, Johnny McGovern, Virginia Gregg, Sidney Miller, and Peter Leeds. John Heaston speaking. Yeah.